I'd rather talk about what I'm about to say, but I have a bad feeling about Sunday. Much like in Star Wars, how they overkill the phrase, I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad, a bad feeling about this. Why? Well, I don't think the Jaguars are that bad. I'm really surprised that like you're that's your stance on the Jaguars. They're not that bad. Everyone acts like they're so bad. They're not. They're they're not great, but they're not bad. I mean, uh, going into the year, I thought highly of the Jaguars compared to the Vikings, even with the Vikings having a better head coach. Yeah, it's just it's, it's gone so bad for Jacksonville in a lot of ways. I mean, Trevor Lawrence has just been awful. Um, I really didn't like their offseason moves. I mean, I like the, the Brian Thomas draft pick, but he's a rookie, so like, I don't think you should have too high expectations for him right away. And then just coming off last year, I just, I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't see it. I just, I'm not sure they're going to be the worst team in the NFL this year, but I'm going to stand by my stance that Doug Peterson is getting fired on Sunday. That is a real take. I think I said like last week, I did not. Yeah. The, the Texans. Are I, get, I don't think you said it as declaratively as, oh, as, as yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah. The Texans are going to get Doug Peterson fired on Sunday. Whoa. So I, I feel very opposite of you about Jacksonville. Okay. Embrace debate. Texans puke it up against the Jaguars or the Texans smoke the Jaguars. I mean, I hope what you said happens. Yeah. Which one's more likely? The thing that is more likely to happen is, is that this is going to be an ugly game and it goes down to the wire. And you're probably relying on Kaimi Fairbairn to save you again. This time at NRG Stadium. Yeah. And because and that's just what it feels like this whole season is going to be. Like it's. And maybe it's, is it because the way to me, I don't know if it's like a stylist, like a style thing, but because it goes back to last year, it, they just, they don't, they don't beat anyone convincingly besides Cleveland in the playoffs. That's truly it. I, I went back and looked, they beat the Steelers early on last year, mm -hmm. but that was a Steelers team. That was a middle of the road team. They barely beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. I mean, it took CJ Stratt performing a miracle at the very end. That's a team that's about on their level. I would say still mm -hmm. Texans and Bucks until the Texans prove otherwise. They had the win against the Bengals. Guess who else is 0-3 this year? The Bengals. I, I, it's something I talked about, Joe, the, the day you're getting the root canal. The resume is not as impressive. And until they add to it, I just think it's over the top to call for a blowout. So I've accepted that they just don't blow people out. And I, I think that it's going to be uncomfortable on Sunday, whether it's because Trevor Lawrence is making big plays happen downfield because they won that game last year without Christian Kirk. Um, or because can we really can we really see Trevor Lawrence being one of the bottom five quarterbacks in the league? I, I, I get it. He's not he's not great. He's not one of the best in the game. He got way too much praise for a game where he threw four interceptions in the first quarter because the chargers chargers all over themselves and they ultimately won. But we've seen Lawrence and the Jaguars at rock bottom two years ago. The Jaguars were not two and six and they made the playoffs and they were annoying after winning that game against the chargers against the chiefs in a game where I think Chad Henney had to finish things for the chiefs because Patrick Mahomes hurt his ankle in that game. That sounds right. I man, I I'm I'm kind of with you on on Trevor, not kind. I'm with you. He's not this bad. I still believe. Like if, if you were to tell me, is Trevor Lawrence going to be a top ten quarterback or be replaced before his contract was over? And I had to bet on one. I'd still bet on him being top ten. Like there's still immense talent there. So it's not even Trevor that I view Jacksonville this poorly. I think it's Doug Peterson. Hmm. That. What happened in Philly, like, yes, it was a it was a good run for him. He won a Super Bowl. But what happened after? The team just nosedived. Right. And it's Trent Balky, one of the worst GMs in the NFL. He's really bad. I can't I, believe he's still employed. I mean, you know, Trevor's been sacked 11 times this year. The offensive line, they haven't really addressed it. They've tried. They've failed. They keep bringing in first-round picks and second-round picks and offensive linemen and free agency, and it doesn't get any better. They tried to address the wide receiver position. Gabe Davis, one of their big signings this offseason, he has eight catches on the year on 16 targets. Like, not, not all of that's going to be on Trevor. They tried with Calvin Ridley. That didn't really work. So it's more about the organization around Trevor for me, about why I view them so negatively than it is Trevor Lawrence himself. So that's where is this, like, do I think they're going to smoke him this weekend? No. Because I just, to me, there's 
when you just look at a piece of paper and you look at a depth chart, there's too much talent on Jacksonville for them to be 41 to 10 bad like they were last week. Yeah, Peterson's interesting, and, and I think Asymmetric Risk brought up on the Twitch that Peterson is the front runner as far as odds to be first coach fired. But a name that you mentioned earlier, Trent Palkey's construction of this roster, there is talent on this roster, but their offensive line is not very good. This should be a game where the Texans get four to five sacks. Mm -hmm. Again, just given who they have in their pass rush, he has done a horrible job building that. And I, I think you also take a look at some of the picks that they've made over the years. I mean, they could have had Aiden Hutchinson, who had what, like four and a half sacks in a game? Yep. And they got, I don't uh, even remember his name. Trevon Walker? Trevon Walker, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's been a lot of whiffs. And just imagine being the Jaguars, picking the guy that the San Francisco 49ers picked instead of Jim Harbaugh. Something that gets forgotten with the 49ers and their brief era of complete incompetence with Jim Tom Sula, mm -hmm. among others. They picked Trent Balky over Jim Harbaugh. They, what a bunch of idiots. Yeah, they picked, they picked Trent Balky, and then they did exactly what the Texans did. They had three head coaches in three years. Yep. They fired Harbaugh. Then they didn't retain their interim, I believe it was. Then they had Tom Sula. They fired him. And then they had Chip Kelly. Forgot they had Chip and Kelly. And then they fired him. And then they hired John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan. And that was all Trent Balky. And Jackson was just like, yeah! Like, this is the guy to turn around the worst organization historically in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah. Trent Balky, it's been like a decade of this guy sucks. Like, like yeah. it, it's crazy that he still has the job. Like, that's... That's why the Jacksonville situation just seems so brutal because, yeah, Trevor isn't terrible. He's also not what he was billed as. But then when you have a guy who is probably uh, kind of middle middle of the road NFL quarterback, we, we can say right now, like talent-wise and how he's played independent of all that, he's probably a pretty average starting quarterback in the league. But then when you put them with this terrible situation around them, then you start, you get results of you lose eight straight games that he starts. I, I don't know if we guys, if you guys play the audio um, when I was out on Tuesday, or I can't remember when the, we had it in the group chat, but I know there was the Mike Greenberg quote from this week on TV where he said Trevor Lawrence was going to be a quarterback that got multiple coaches fired. So some people think it's on Trevor Lawrence. That, like, I mean, he's already at one. So give him a pass. <laughs> I'm not oh, giving him a pass for Urban Meyer. He's, Urban Meyer is one of the greatest college football coaches of all time. College. He's at one, and then tomorrow or uh, Sunday, Sunday he'll yeah. be at two. Yeah. <laughs> when when you're right, and uh, and he gets uh, he gave him that contract. He gets Doug Peterson fired. They did give him that contract, so yeah, there's a very good chance that somebody uh, else yeah. gets canned. He's not getting cut if Peterson gets yeah gone. Anyway, it is Galan and George. I still have a bad feeling about this Texans Jaguars game. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah. Thanks, Han Solo. I love that part about Star Wars. They just kept on bringing that bit. That and uh, hope. They always say it. there's rebellions are built on hope is one that comes yeah, out later that's, on. That's, a, that's, that's a, like the new Star Wars. That's a prequel Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. That's, yeah. And, uh, no offense. It's kind of lame. I agree. But rebellions they, they, are built on hope. They, but they pushed no, the hope word hard. The, rebellions are pretty brutal. I mean... Go watch John Adams and see the tar and feathering scene where the <laughs> bunch of mass holes who, of course, got us into a war because they got drunk and threw a bunch of tea in a harbor. Just 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 realize it's it's not it's not really built on hope. It would be bloody mm -hmm. purges, people getting assassinated. I think it's built on hope because they kept losing. And then fine, they're squeaking out wins. So <laughs> they were getting those sixty-yard field so goals. The, so they're Jets fans. No, they just they 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 were winning, but they weren't covering the spread. They, they might be Texans fans. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> like, they're zero and three against the spread, but and, two and one. And every time and you think they win, the Empire comes back. Like keep losing. Yeah, here's another Death Star. See, like Star Wars. There's some things they did too much. Like, hey, let's build. An they'll never see another Death Star coming. This one's a planet. It's different. I like how, uh, even in. In the original trilogy, where they just had another Death Star like halfway built, but this time he was like, "Make sure you, make sure you get the laser part right <laughs> this time. Let's let's nail that first, and we can build the rest later." He looks, 
Starts, build, your, build your attack first. Starts, defense later. Starts with the Death Star. Be- best defense is a good offense. That's what the Emperor was on. How will the Death Star blow up this time? Find out next. You got Joe. 